Hello and welcome back to Tesla News. Today we're going to talk about the sustainability when it comes to EVs. We're also going to talk about Tesla news coming from Germany and abroad. So glad to have you back here on my channel. Well, for us in Germany, we like to talk and discuss and argue a lot. And currently there is a lot of discussion as well about the entire supply chain when it comes to EVs. And in general, I can understand that a bit, but many people ignore what people are actually working on to get the supply chain when it comes to the EV business much better than for the ICE vehicles. Here, for example, we have a very good example of Tesla cars being shipped to Europe. Right now, this is the only option when it comes especially to the Model 3. But if we look into the strategy of Tesla when it comes to the Chinese market and Chinese consumers getting a Tesla car from a Chinese factory and U.S. customers from a U.S. factory, it's just a question of time that Tesla will do the same in Europe. If we now look into the differences between Europe, China, U.S., we see that when it comes to ICE vehicles, for example, for Europe, compared to the EV vehicle, the emissions are way lower. But if we look into the Chinese market, of course, it also has the aspect of how are the entire processes of raw materials, what kind of energy is used when it comes to, for example, the production of an EV. And now there comes the misunderstanding. Many people that are buying an ICE car or don't like an EV car are ignoring what kind of emissions are actually being um, done or produced while producing an ICE car. Plus, you have the entire supply chain for the oil and everything that you are actually putting into your tank when you drive an ICE car. Now, for the EV market, it is the first time that we have an awareness of the entire supply chain. And those who critic um, or criticize the EV market do like to point out stuff that is never discussed in the ICE business. Now, this is the issue, but it's also a chance. And as we talk about recycling, um, one company is Redwood Materials, for example, or if we talk about localizing the production, for example, U.S. customers get a U.S. car, Chinese customers get a Chinese car, and European customers get, in this case, a German car being produced in Giga Berlin. With the entire localized supply chain, Tesla can achieve exactly that, what we are not achieving when it comes to ICE cars. And I do think that the difference when it comes to the emissions of a battery car and an ICE car, those differences will be getting bigger and bigger by time. For example, we have here the battery production that will start next year. This is also a step to localize production, make it more cost efficient, but as well with less emissions. And I think that is the right way to go. Please let me know what you think about this entire discussions as, um, for example, maybe in the US, you guys are not talking too much about that in UK, maybe more or in Europe, even less. In Germany, we do have a lot of talks about this topic. Now, wondering what is the average warranty claim rate when it comes to a Tesla car? We have seen that in 2020, it was 1.1%, 2021, 1.1%. And this despite growing at a very rapid rate. And we also see that, for example, VW is at 4.5%, was already higher, and that is a pretty high number. So we clearly see that Tesla is a very reliable car, Tesla owners are not having too many issues when it comes to the warranty claim. Now, looking forward, um, we can expect that Tesla is going to continue to achieve that, maybe get even under 1%. A new option will also come when it comes to transferring phone calls. For example, if you are on your phone, you go into your Tesla, switching towards the audio in your Tesla, um, this is an option that is now with a transfer button or will be in the future possible. The same as if you are on speakers talking inside your Tesla car and you go with the um, phone out that you can transfer the phone call directly on your phone and you can continue talking on your phone as nothing happened. So there is no disconnection and issue in between. That is a nice update. Again, no timeline yet. I do expect it in the next few weeks. Um, as um, more updates are coming out. 
Now we talked about the um, reliability, the advantage of the supply chain, and we also talked about um, the potential to save costs. And um, when we talk about the lithium refinery, this is another way to reduce costs, but also reduce, for example, emissions by localizing production, being more efficient, finding ways to refine lithium in a way maybe other producers are not doing it. So you can actually reduce the footprint of the EV being produced in Austin. So again, another project that Tesla is working on, more details are for sure to follow. Um, we have to wait for that. Now, when it comes to this entire reliability discussion and the entire CO to or emission footprint. Um, I think when it comes to the EV business, we are on the right track and we are asking the right questions. When it comes to the financials, we also see a big advantage to the car makers down below like Toyota, Volkswagen, Mercedes, Ford, GM, Stellantis, Honda, Hyundai. We clearly see that Tesla here with the numbers above there is in the same range as Alphabet. Um, when it comes to the debt ratio, when it comes to equity, when it comes to EBITDA, when it comes to revenue, when it comes to the entire score, Tesla is even um, close to NVIDIA. So um, that's pretty crazy. Um, so again, um, Tesla is doing a lot of work here, despite not even having a good grading from Moody's or other grading agencies, um, which is again um, the big question mark here, but we can all think why this is happening. Now, so we do have this way. We also have um, the um, future production here in Europe, as I mentioned before in the beginning of the video. And currently we do have 55,452 um, Model Y produced in October in China. Lots of exports happening right now. And the Model 3, we do see now after the upgrade in Shanghai, more and more the difference in the production rate. Um, this was something to be expected. And I think um, this will um, further continue into 2023. When it comes to cars moving from China to Europe, we have a new one, which is Grand Halifax. Lots of German cars on there. Um, I do expect the Globus Sun actually be for the UK. Um, sadly, I haven't seen so many carriers to Australia. Somehow they don't track them here on this side. Um, please let me know um, if, if you're from Australia, if you received some Tesla cars. I've noticed two carriers, but I did expect a bit more actually. Um, or they will do that um, in December as the um, distance to Australia is not that far. Now, I want to thank you for your support. Thank you for being here today again. If you do enjoy my channel, do consider subscribing. If you need anything for your Tesla, check out tessiesupply.com. German company, nice products. Would glad to have you back there as well. So thank you very much. Take care.